Good day and welcome to another interesting episode of your program, Infrastructure Weekly. We will, as usual, be taking you around the country on visits to project sites in the power, works and housing sectors, as well as rail. I am your host, Abosadi Omowi. We will be back after this time out to set sail. Stay tuned. Coming together this is what Infrastructure is the backbone of development, which explains the Buhari government's efforts at bridging the facility gap. Infrastructure Weekly is a television package designed to bring you latest information on hundreds of development projects going on in various sectors all over the nation. There is no state in Nigeria today where you will not see our contractors busy at work. Power generation, rural electrification, road rehabilitations, national housing scheme, construction of roads and rail lines across the country, you name it. We are now able to produce 7,000 megawatt of power. That is no longer debatable. Infrastructure Weekly is Nigerians working together for a better Nigeria. So be better informed to take better informed decisions. Watch Infrastructure Weekly, showing on Channel Television, Thursdays 2.30 p.m., NTA Network, Wednesdays 5 p.m., and Co TV News, Fridays at 8 p.m. Infrastructure Weekly, making development known. We start off this week from the housing sector and precisely in Imo State, where like all the other sites of the 2016 National Housing Project, it's now at over 80% completion. The site, according to the state team leader, Uchenna Ikejiofo, has helped in addressing the issue of youth restiveness with employment opportunities created and will also help in reducing the housing deficit and exorbitant rent across the state. This is the site of the National Housing Program in Imo State, instituted by the federal government as part of effort aimed at elevating the nation's housing deficit. The site, located in half a community of the Oweri West local government area of the state, has now reached an advanced stage of work. The team leader of the National Housing Program in charge of the site in Imo State, Uchina Ikejiafo, stated that the program, apart from the creation of job opportunities, when completed, we make accommodation affordable for the people of the state. According to the team leader and the contractor in charge of the infrastructure at the site, the project is at over 80% completion. We have made quite a lot of progress. I think uh, by half of the contractors, we, we have 12 contractors on site building 23 different house types. Okay? As we are talking today, six of the now you can see six of the contractors have attained practical completion handed over their buildings. Okay? While uh, the six others are in various stages of completion, most of them above above 50 percent. As, uh, as you can see now, we are doing water, water reticulation. We've done the borehole, we've done the stand, the tank. If you look at it down, you see the, the tank stand and the tank is being fully installed. I can tell you we are all about 95% completion. IKJ Afo noted that the team is also working to address the issue of challenges that come with this kind of project. He, however, opined that all is being done to continue to carry the host community along since they are the primary beneficiary of the project. The complaint has always been the ministry not uh, giving them compensatory plots. But as we speak now, I am aware that the ministry has uh, uh, acceded to that particular demand and has given the community, uh, the, you know, a bulk portion of land as compensatory for them to share among themselves. The road is about, um, let's say, 75%. But what is remaining is asphalt. If you look at it, you can see the drain completed. You see the, the filling. Uh, the laterite is filled, is compacted. Everything is done to level. The project on completion is expected to help in reducing the high tendency rate in the state and also serve the host community by creating employment for its youths. <laughs> 
The ministers of state one and two in the Ministry of Power, Works and Housing, Mustafa Babashiori and Suleiman Zarma, have described the National Housing Program as a major opportunity for professionals in the construction industry. They said the program will impact positively in terms of employment and development of skills and competencies in delivery of mass housing all around the country. The housing and urban development sector in the colonial and post-colonial era shows that adequate and affordable housing remains elusive to a large number of Nigerians despite the myriad of policies and programs initiated to address the problems facing the sector. Since the inception of the present All Progressives-led administration, the Federal Minister of Power, Works and Housing has continued to review its strategies and fashion new options to address the challenges in housing infrastructure sector, especially with over 700% increased budgetary allocation in the last three years. Most of the states, uh, you, visit, you find empty buildings, empty houses, and uh, studies show that uh, they either were not built with consultation and conformity with what people want, or people could not afford them. So we were very clear that the country should decide in consultation with the people what kind of house they want. So we're running pilots and after the pilots are, are tested and people accept them and uh, they can afford them, then the market will open for rapid mass deployment. Since the first national housing you know, uh, program that was executed under President Shagari. 2016 was the first year when national housing program uh, was also introduced by this government. One of the strategies adopted by President Muhammad Buhari to increase housing stock in Nigeria is the national housing program being implemented in the 36 states of the Federation and the FCT. The strategy employed by the federal government now serves as an evolution of the Nigerian housing brand, which is a diversity of designs in response to cultural and climatic peculiarities of the Nigerian people. This is the first time as a government that we are looking at who is going to take these houses, what is his need, what is his requirement, because affordability is a term that can be given any meaning by anybody. For example, a five million naira house can be affordable to me or to the permanent secretary, but is it affordable to some other persons? No. Therefore, uh, what you are building is only affordable to the person who can afford it. So we now look at who the person is who wants to take this house and then try to make it affordable to him. The housing program uh, was designed with uh, to address not just the housing need but also uh, in line with the economic recovery and growth plan uh, touch the lives of the people so that the components in the, the building materials are mostly locally produced uh, building materials efforts of the president buhari led administration it's geared towards implementing the National Housing Program as a demonstration of the political will of the federal government to deliver on critical infrastructure in fulfillment of its promises to Nigerians. The program is having direct impacts on the people as many professionals, contractors, artisans and vendors are being engaged in the value chain. The program has uh, made significant impact. Uh, in terms of uh, job employment, we went around our sites and we found that uh, an average of about 1,000 people gaining uh, employment in each of our sites. And uh, uh, like I mentioned, the materials, we took stock and found that over $23,000 uh, uh, to be purchased and over 27,000 uh, windows, uh, floor tiles, wall tiles, running into hundreds of thousands of uh, square meters. 
So all these, you know, have uh, made positive impact on the manufacturing sector. At present, over 2,700 of mixed housing units are at various levels of completion across the nation, and the Ministry of Power, Works and Housing is set to revive Nigeria's housing sector through the establishment of a sustainable and adequate housing delivery system that will ensure easy access to home ownership for Nigerians, both in urban and rural areas. The program is still Infrastructure Weekly. You can get in touch with us on the social media handles showing on your screen. Join us after this time out for more on the program. Stay tuned. London, New York or Lagos, business or holiday, home or office, you can now carry out your tax transactions from anywhere in the world. You can now file all your tax returns, pay online, get a receipt and even process your tax clearance certificate from anywhere in the world online and in real time. All you need to do is log on to www.firs.gov.ng and click on e-services and be introduced to the world of innovation, convenience and transparency from the FIRS. You can also pay stamp duty as you register a new company with the CAC or for other transactions that request time duty payment online. You can also file your withholding tax returns and determine the withholding tax deducted from you is in government covers so that you can get your receipt within 45 days as long as the deduction has been remitted. Yes, all of this and more online at www.firs.gov.ng slash e-services. FIRS, making tax administration as easy as ABC. Please note that all FIRS services are free of charge. This message is from the Federal Inland Revenue Service. It pays to pay your tax. If you were just joining us, the program is still Infrastructure Weekly. For comments on some of the projects and reports we have brought to you on this program, please feel free to get in touch on the social media handles showing on your screen. Your comments will be on subsequent episodes of the program. Now to the road sector. The federal government says it will continue to invest in infrastructure all over the country, not only to advance economic development and diversification, but as a means of social change. Director of Highways in the Ministry said the investment will continue on the part of the federal government. He said these investments will take Nigeria to the next level. Nigeria has a national road network comprising of federal, state and local government roads, making Nigeria the country with the largest road network in West Africa. These roads connect villages to cities, industrial centers to ports, as well as link agrarian communities to economic towns. Against this background, the federal government of Nigeria under President Muhammadu Buhari has recognized the challenges and opportunities inherent within the nation's road infrastructure sector. The Ministry of Power, Works and Housing is managing the construction and rehabilitation of more than 300 roads and bridges spread across the six geopolitical zones of the country. In line with the popular Chinese saying, if you want to make a people rich, build roads. The federal government says the economic recovery and growth plan of the present administration administration seeks to provide good roads to reduce travel time, vehicle operation costs, develop other forms of transportation, make economic, commercial and business activities thrive along various routes. With the leadership provided by the president, uh, there's a very, very clear commitment to uh, renewing and replacing and expanding the country's infrastructure. So a lot of our public spending is committed to roads, rail, bridges, power, airports, seaports, and that is what the, the government of Nigeria under President Buhari is focusing on. A nation cannot grow without, you know, uh, equal uh, development in the areas of our infrastructure. But only 20 billion naira was uh, allocated in 2015. But in 2016, the government of uh, President Mohamed Buhari allocated over 200 and something billion. And consider the fact that immediately after 2015, in 2016, we went into recession 
and even in the midst of that, that huge, you know, uh, sum was allocated for works. The first two years of the Buari administration has seen a quantum leap and the funding of road infrastructure. In 2015, 19 billion naira was set aside by the former administration of Goodluck Jonathan for all federal roads. The federal government, under President Muhammadu Buhari, has set aside 300 billion naira for the reconstruction and rehabilitation of strategic roads across the country in 2018. Travel time, which used to be about four hours or less, is now six hours less. This has also increased efficiency in the movement of goods, persons and services across the country, as well as boosts investments and creates jobs. You will give it to this government that the quality of roads that you see us building today is definitely a departure of what was done in the last 16, 20 years of this nation. We have a situation where you're building a 100 kilometer road before now. By the time you do the first 40 kilometers, the 10, first 10 kilometers is already begging for maintenance. We have changed that narrative today. The quality of our road is A plus. At the time this administration came in, we had projects that were awarded to about 2 point something trillion naira commitments by government. Between 2015 and today, the government has awarded projects up to 1.2, about 1.2 trillion, and there are about 164 projects. This is all geared towards bridging that infrastructure gap and providing a network that people can travel at uh, reduce their travel times to their destination. Since the inception of this administration, there has been an increase in capital spending to about 30% compared to about 10% earlier. This increased spending contributes to bridging the infrastructure deficits and boosting the nation's GDP through enhanced local content in Nigerian road construction. We came up with a solution. And what they did was to make a seed fund from the Sovereign Wealth Fund. They set up the Presidential, uh, Presidential Infrastructure Development Fund, which is being managed by the Nigerian Sovereign Investment Authority. And the seed fund of 650 million US dollars was put in that fund. And that fund is to start the funding, the financing of uh, Lagos Ibadan, Second Niger Bridge, Abuja Cabinet to Canon, the East West Road, and the Mangela Project, Brown Project. So there are five key projects under that fund. The first three years of this present government has witnessed a drastic reduction in the number of stalled road projects and the commencement of new ones all over the country. However, at the rate it is boosting infrastructure investments, roads, rail and power, the Buari administration is undoubtedly helping Nigeria find the road to glory. And the road will Thanks for staying tuned. For details, comments and inquiries, you can get in touch with us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Infrastructure Weekly and on Twitter at Infra underscore Weekly. We will be back after this break as we hit the home stretch. Stay tuned. Coming together opportunity. Uh, this is what Infrastructure is the backbone of development, which explains the Buhari government's efforts at bridging the facility gap. Infrastructure Weekly is a television package designed to bring you latest information on hundreds of development projects going on in various sectors all over the nation. There is no state in Nigeria today where you will not see our contractors busy at work. Power generation, rural electrification, road rehabilitations, national housing scheme, construction of roads and rail lines across the country, you name it. We are now able to produce 7,000 megawatt of power. That is no longer debatable. Infrastructure Weekly is Nigerians working together for a better Nigeria. So be better informed to take better informed decisions. Watch Infrastructure Weekly, showing on Channel Television, Thursdays 2.30 p.m., NTA Network, Wednesdays 5 p.m., and Co TV News, Fridays at 8 p.m. Infrastructure Weekly, making development known.
Thanks so much for staying with us. We hit the home straight today with a look at the effort being made to continue to reduce the incidence of disagreement between customers and distribution companies in the distribution leg of the power value chain and also continue the expansion of the transmission grid. These efforts, according to the Minister of Power, Works and Housing, continue apace. He orders that the expansion of the transmission grid is a 10-year strategic plan that is ongoing. Nigeria is a country of over 150 million people and has for many years of electricity generation, transmission and distribution witnessed frequent and persistent outages. Currently, the federal government has embarked on power sector reforms with the intention of improving the unpleasant scenario, in turn, reduce the scope of monopoly control of the nation's power industry. Minister of Power, Works and Housing, Babatunde Fashola, says the federal government is willing to partner with the Arab Republic of Egypt to support the manufacturing and provision of meters for sustainable investments in the distribution end of the power value chain in the country while emphasizing the 10-year transmission power plan to increase transmission capacity. We need investments in the distribution end of our power value chain. Uh, we have a 10-year transmission plan, um, which will increase the transmission capacity to transmit energy between the uh, generating companies and the distribution companies and uh, we've already started implementing uh, most of that. So across the country now uh, there are close to 90 transmission projects in different stages of completion. Either expansion of substations or total reconstruction of new lines, expansion of uh, existing capacity, reconducting of existing lines and that is going on in about 90 different places across the country. So the transmission capacity is increasing as each project is being completed. Sharif, who represented the Arab Republic of Egypt, appeals for continuous cooperation between Nigeria and Egypt in some mega power works and housing projects across the nation. We look forward to working with uh, uh, our partners and uh, our friends in Nigeria uh, to explore the opportunities of cooperation and explore the opportunities of uh, mutual investment uh, in Egypt and in Nigeria. Across the country now, we have close to 90 transmission projects in different stages of completion on expansion of substation and expansion of existing capacities, among others. This has led to the increase in power generation by approximately 1,000 megawatts yearly. However, the big challenge facing the sector, which is at the distribution end, is gradually being addressed. Why do we carry The sector generates two point something megawatts. It's not up to three thousand megawatts. But today we are generating over seven thousand megawatts. Government has invested in almost all the sectors, the generation, the transmission and even the distribution. We're generating less than 3,000 megawatts. Today, we are generating 7,000 megawatts and more. Now, that did not happen as an accident. It is a deliberate attempt by this government. That is how we achieved that. Now, if you generate power, and it doesn't get to the end, you have a problem. Now, we also invested, and we are still investing in transmission. We have a willing capacity as of today that can transport over 50,000 megawatts of power. We have that capacity today. And what are we doing? We are using indigenous 
contractors and indigenous engineers to boost this whaling capacity and they are warehoused in TCN, the transmission company of Nigeria. Acknowledging the long-standing bilateral relationship between Nigeria and Egypt, Fashola says a lot of government funding under President Muhammad Buhari's administration is committed to power construction of bridges, roads, airports, seaports, among others, in order to create a globally competitive Nigerian economy. The partnership between both countries will foster huge investments and boost power supply in the country. Before we go today, we'll leave you with the cheering news of the energizing of two more transformers at power transmission substations in Edo and Ogun State by the Transmission Company of Nigeria. And that's part of the overall power transmission grid development and expansion. The transformers, both 60 MVA, will in the case of Edo serve the Okbala community, Boa Cement Factory, Agenabodi Town and Environs, and the Igara community of Edo State. The transformer in Ogun State is expected to serve the people of Pakpalanto and Environs in Ogun State. That's it for today. Join us again for another interesting episode of the program next week. Thanks so much for staying tuned. Let's continue that conversation and engagement on social media and continue to be a good citizen of Nigeria by paying your tax. I am Abosade Omohoye. See you next week.